Well, are you looking for a new companion to ride along with you in your EDC system? Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. We are checking out the Kaiser Big Lighter, I believe is how you pronounce that. It's German for companion. And uh, I gotta tell you, when I first saw this hit the market, I think about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I immediately gravitated to it. I was like, oh man, I gotta get my hands on one of these. The the thinness of the blade, the larger size blade, you know, it's a bigger pocket knife, a three and a half inch blade, BG10 steel, $52, lots of color combinations, it's simple, clean, under four ounces. Uh, there was just a lot in its profile and design. I was like, man, I, I, I have to check it out. It's what I gravitate to. It's like what I like to carry. So this is a video very much on what I like to carry and showing you whether or not it's gonna be something that you will want to carry and have as a companion in your pocket. So if you're anything like me, and I know a lot of you guys are, otherwise you wouldn't be subscribing and watching the channel, I think this knife is really going to jump off the screen at you. It's gonna say, hey, you want me as your friend, as your companion on your daily adventures around town and out in the world. So let's go ahead and see what this has to offer. Good, bad, positive, negative. We're gonna run in competitive options and we're gonna talk about all that it has to offer today as we look at this Kaiser pocket knife. So let's go ahead, get to it, see what it can do. All right, here we are with the handle. I got this obviously in blue. They have tan, green, I think they have black. There are a couple other versions out there. G10 handles, stainless steel liners that have been milled out, which is really nice. So this is gonna come in at 3.8 ounces, so under four ounces. Just seen a lot of really good knives lately, a lot from China that are coming in at under four ounces for a lot of knife, which is super sweet and not these big heavy bricks. Totally, I mean, that's that's a telltale sign for me right there. You know, the quality and the the um, attention to detail that will go into a knife and whether or not they've milled out liners and you know how heavy the knife is. So that's super sweet. Uh, overall length is 4.625 inches overall length and it's gonna come in at 0 0.49. So just a hair under half an inch, so a little bit thinner, longer than what you're gonna expect on a lot of other knives. Fills out my hands really well, large size hands. I wouldn't call this a tactical knife by any means, but you do have massive cut in right there. So you're not gonna you know, slide up on the blade. You have lots of control. Nice little cut in there, got plenty of real estate left over. No hot spots to worry about, now no jimping or anything like that, but just feels really natural in the hand. The neck right here is not too narrow. Some knives like this would be really, really narrow here and possibly you know uncomfortable pinching with my large size hands, but it feels really good. Slight recasso and the slight guard right there, giving me still a pretty close bl blade edge for good control without going you know too close or too far away. So, I mean, zero complaints in that regard. Uh, no hot spots, you know, squared off, you know, that with, I would say, medium traction on the G10, which is pretty sweet. I dig that a lot. Flow through um, right there with the lanyard hole and flow through standoffs back here as well. So totally digging that. Um, and then we do have this nice blue, and I think it's blue on all of them. I could be wrong, but I think it's blue. This little spacer right here around the pivot, which is pretty sweet. So um, when it comes to handle ergonomics, not only is this thing light, it's going to be slim, great for EDC, and you're gonna feel really good in your hand. All right, we're gonna look at lockup deployment and uh, centering. So the centering is really good. It's just a hair off to the left, but zero rubbing uh, or anything like that. And I'm not seeing any floating right or left with several hundred you know, deployments at this point in time. And guys, when I test these knives out, you know, I mean, I'll sit there watching TV at night or watching a movie, chilling, and I mean, I'm just gonna be like, boom, open, close. You know, and I, I try to do like about 75 to 100 at least in a sitting, you know, and do I do that for several days while I test these knives out so I can see over time, is there floating on the blades? And so I have not seen any of that with this knife so I can guys can give you so I can give you guys a good data point um, that has helped with the bronze washers in there. So good, not Teflon or anything else like that. And then we have a liner lock when we deploy the thing. Nice, good, perfect. I wouldn't go any thinner on that liner lock, but it hits right where it's supposed to be easily disengaged. And we got good thumb studs, good cut in there for righties. Uh, a little trickier if you're lefty, you can do it. Absolutely. Um, and it's easy to disengage. So if you're left-handed, you know, not a problem. I'm doing it and I'm not left-handed. So just something to kind of note there, but easily disengage. Uh, with the uh, bronze bushings, now that's standard, not, not an issue, but man, a lot of other Chinese knives, like the Rake, $35, 
We're gonna talk price point stuff here in a second. Ball bearing, you know, washers or ball bearing deployment, multi ball bearing on this Stedman, Steedman. And the, these guys are about $15, $20 less. So it's not bad, but uh, I think uh, Kaiser needs to kind of step their game up for the future if they're going to compete with their brethren over across the ocean in China. So just something to kind of more uh, food for thought than anything else. Great, you know, smooth deployment, though. Zero complaints. It's going to feel like a Rat Model 1 in its deployment and lockup, which is pretty sick. So the pocket clip is nothing to write home about. It's doable. gets the job done. we got a little bit of a flare out, a little bit more than I would probably prefer there. Um, then kicks back in and goes up, tip up right-handed. Uh, it is left-handed as well, so you can swap it, but it will be at a different angle because of this cut-in right here, you can see, um, so that it'll be closer to the frame overall, or sorry, closer to like this lip when you swap it for a lefty. So just kind of keep that in mind. It'll drop the clip. Instead of it being more centered, it'll be closer to the bottom here, um, but it is reversible there uh you know satin finish pretty thin so that's a plus i like that but uh you know gets the job done nothing right home about nothing crazy or cool in its design all right business and ffg gotta love that uh just the the blade shape right out of the gate guys when i first saw this hit the market like i don't know what was it, a year and a half ago something like that just really connected with me so good little belly there, longer, you know, cutting edge. So mo definitely more of like a precision blade than like a big leaf shape, you know, blade, like a big spider co or something like that. Um, so full flat grind. And we do have uh, a nice non sharp edge here. So this is not going to throw sparks. You know, they've milled this edge ever so slightly on the back spine there. And then a little bit of a drop, good precise tip. Back here, we're looking at 0 0.13, so on the thicker end of some knives that we've looked at recently, um, but it precisions down and you know tapers down pretty quick there. Uh, decent relief edge, and then VG10 steel. Uh, now this knife is made in China, so this is, uh, from what I understand, Japanese-made blade and then put together in China for the Chinese company Kaiser. So... Um, yeah, the the overall blade length, before I forget, three inches from handle to tip, and like 3.4, 3.7, 375 uh, on actual cutting edge. And basically this does everything that you would expect a full flat grind EDC preferred blade would do. Uh, the particularly cardboard slicing, full flat grinds are fantastic for slicing. So for, for a cardboard and food prep, very happy with how it performed. And then, you know, piercing and packaging the tip and just the way that the blade is more of a thinner, you know, from edge to spine. Um, uh, precision blade it was able to pierce and penetrate very easily, you know, cordage, rope, all that type of stuff. Just did really well, as you guys are seeing throughout the footage. Now, a couple things to note is that um, the edge was not quite... Uh, to my preference out of the box. Um, I've seen higher relief edges that are a little bit sharper. So um, this is the factory edge and it did fine, but it wasn't quite to my liking. So I tuned it up a little bit afterwards. And I saw this with another Kaiser as well. I just would have liked to see a little bit of a higher relief edge um, than me having to put my own edge on it. I have to do that with a lot of knives. So not a massive you know, deal, but just to kind of show you guys here, hopefully you can see this on frame. You can see the difference between like a Spyderco's relief edge and the relief edge on the Kaiser. The Kaiser just has a shorter relief edge, which means it's not gonna be um, as razor sharp as the Spyderco would be. But the VG10 held up really well and arguably I would say actually will hold a slightly better edge than the Spyderco will. I found that Spyderco's VG10 tends to be a little bit on the softer side, which means it's really easy to work with and will be easier to resharpen than say this Kaiser, but it doesn't hold its edge quite as long as a lot of other VG10. And so I would say this is definitely on par with what Spyderco produces or even slightly better edge retention, but it will probably take a little bit longer for you to reprofile. Some of that again is that it has a shorter grind and you know all that stuff, but VG10, great steel, very rust resistant, and gonna hold a much better edge than your HC OS 8s, uh, you know, 440C, 420 high carbon. It's definitely a step up and similar to 154CM. All right. Price on the Kaiser is going to come in at $52. Amazon Blade HQ all day long, no matter the color combination, $52. And guys, I really appreciate it when you use the hyperlinks that we offer to you in the description below over to Blade HQ and Amazon. This, you know, it, it helps me continue to make the content that you see here. Buy the gear 
test it out, take time away from family and other you know activities and stuff to create this content. So thank you for the support through the hyperlinks. No matter what gear you want to purchase, when you use that, we get the small kickback and it helps us continue to do what we do. So thank you guys for using those hyperlinks. They will be provided below, not only for this knife, but all the knives we're about to discuss here. So $52, um, which is a great price point for the VG10, G10, handle scales and the blade and all that stuff. So in comparison, I'm not going to do that knife first. You know what? Let's do this knife first. Really, this will probably be the two that you'll be looking at more than anything uh, is the D2 version of the Rat Model 1, which is going to come in at uh, about $42, so $10 less. The differences are this. First off, that, and I will tell you, the D, the Rat is more of kind of a, a massive do-everything knife. It's heavy. It's just over five ounces. It's got a nice, really well done ergonomic handle, but it's just a big blade. The, the blade profile is wide. The handle is wide, which is good depending on like how long you're using the knife, longer tasks, bigger, harder tasks. It's actually going to feel great, but it's not always very EDCable. I don't really like carrying it around town to the office and that type of thing. And that's where I really believe the um, Beg Lighter, I believe is how I'm, again, pronouncing it, Beg Lighter, um, in my German accent, Beg Lighter. Ah, oh, yes, um, das ist gut. Anyway, uh, the this is going to definitely be way more like EDCable because it's oh, 3.8 ounces, so it's like an ounce and a half lighter, and it is noticeable. G10 versus glass reinforced nylon. Uh, the handle scales have been milled out. The liners, uh, the VG10 different, but you know the blade is more precise, more precision. Very similar, you know, liner lock, so similar strength. You know, you're getting reversible pocket clips, a lot of that type of stuff. Bronze washers on both. Um, and one other knife I just want to run in here super quick. Uh, is going to be the Steel Will Intrigue. Really nice, very similar, Chinese made, $45 on this one, but again, glass reinforced nylon instead of G10. You're getting that flow through construction. It's gonna be about an ounce lighter, I think, think like 2.8 ounces. Liner lock, flipper design versus uh, thumb stud design. Some people love it, some people hate it. Saber grind, full flat grind, positives and negatives there. Super precise tip, way more precise than on the Kaiser. But uh, that can be a pro or con, good for precision, bad for strength. So just something to consider there. So similar um, in the, the overall profile, you know, and just kind of being a slimmer blade. Uh, one other knife I will, just more for, you know, food for thought here than anything else, is uh, the Crossbones from CRKT. Super sweet blade and how it looks. Um, but uh, I will say that the Kaiser for the money, you know, because this one's about 55 to 60 bucks, Aus 8 Steel really thin liner lock, um, and only single directional pocket clip. So though it looks really good, you're going to get better steel, you're going to get better traction, more pocket clip options, different things like that um, on the um, Kaiser than you will on the crossbone. So it's just things to think about. And you are getting a lot of value on the big lighter than you will be with a lot of other knives out there. And it is a great kind of middle of the road, larger, but slimmer EDC knife. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope this video has helped you out, show you what the Kaiser Big Lighter has to offer. Uh, you know, it's just, it's what I gravitate to, guys. And, and I think um, throughout this video, you've seen that there is major value in the design for the price point. You're getting a lot of knife. You're getting a lot of knife for EDC tasks. This isn't, you know, some heavy duty folder. It's not a tactical knife. This thing is just that, that larger EDC friendly folder. And uh, it's totally a companion for me. And I love it. It's a really great knife to be carrying with you when you are out and about. So, uh, if you've been thinking about it, you won't regret it. And honestly, in my opinion, it, I think it's basically the more EDCable friendly of the Rat Model 1. And I think we kind of talked about that on the tabletop. But yeah, I would totally agree with that. If you like the Rat Model 1, but it's just a little heavy and beefy and you're looking for a little bit slimmed down, but you like the size, kind of that bigger size, for about $10 more than that, you're going to get this uh, this feeling knife. And I think it's going to meet the needs of a lot of you out there. So thank you guys for coming over here today, checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like. Make sure to share this on your social media. Tell your friends about the channel. Uh, invite them to become part of the GT family. If you're not a current subscriber, I would invite you to become part of the family and community that we have here. Throwing up videos like this every single week. If you're a current subscriber, rock on. You are awesome. Thank you for your regular support 
of the channel and what we do here. Uh, hit that bell icon, that little like bell looking thing next to the subscribe button and make sure that we're in the news feed and you don't miss out on the videos that we throw up week after week. And finally, guys, check us out on all the relevant social media. That's a great way to see projects I'm working on. St I like to throw up, you know, like, hey, this is what's coming a couple more weeks and this will be hitting or answering questions that maybe you're, it's hard for you to get answers on the YouTube channel or, you know, you just want to have a, a deeper conversation, see different things. It's just a great family and community that we have as well on Instagram, Facebook, and places like that. So always remember, guys, stay equipped, stay prepared. Can I do it left-handed? We'll see you out there.